Welcome to the 512th Imagine Greater Buffalo program and our 134th YouTube video for this Imagine program. Both are hosted by the Buffalo and Erie County Public Library, our wonderful downtown library. Thank you for joining us today. Now, before we get started, just a little housekeeping. Everyone watching will be muted and your video turned off. If you have a question or comment, please type it into the chat box and we'll go through them at the end of the presentation. We are recording this program, so you can watch it again later on the Downtown Central Library's Facebook page and YouTube channels. And we certainly hope you share the link with others. This program is created by the Center for the Study of Art, Architecture, History and Nature, or Cezanne, and ImagineLifelongLearning.com. Each Tuesday has a focus. The first Tuesday uh, is art and creativity. The second, architecture and design. The third, history and future. And the fourth, nature and science. Now, the uh, this being the third week, uh, there's always two themes that we do here at the Imagine Greater Buffalo program. One is to imagine Greater Buffalo, which I consider uh, all of Western New York and Southern Ontario, uh, imagine it as a premier cultural and nature center. And the second theme is imagine a healthy, wealthy, and sustainable community. And to do both, we have to imagine lifelong learning. Now, on to our featured speaker today. Rita Arjun Auerbach is an internationally recognized watercolor artist and educator who is represented in numerous museums, corporate and private collections throughout the United States. Her award-winning paintings have portrayed subjects including Buffalo architecture, the Chautauqua Institution's Victorian and landscapes uh, inspired by extensive travel. Her works are characterized by strong value contrast created by light and shade using rich, luminous, transparent watercolor. Rita was a delegate to the 1986 Chautauqua Institute Eisenhower Institute Conference on US-Soviet relations in Riga, Latvia. Her sketches of the trip, which we'll hear more about soon, became the conference's official gift to the Soviet government and are published in her book, Sketches and Reflections of a Journey. Now, it's a great privilege to welcome Rita Arjun Auerbach. Rita, take it away. Thank you, Dennis, and good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to talk to you, of course, about the book. The book I published myself called Sketches and reflections of a journey. And it contains many of the sketches that I did while on this trip. Now that was 37 years ago, as you can imagine, situation in the Soviet Union and relations between the United States were very, very different. It was before the Cold War, it was during the Cold War and before the Berlin Wall came down before independence of the Baltic States. I'd like to show you, first of all, a map of where the Baltic States exist. Um, in the first um, slide, please. There we go. You can see Moscow and the relation to the three Baltic States, Estonia, Latvia, and Lithuania. Now, our conference went directly to Latvia after visiting, of course, Leningrad and in the future, Moscow was after the trip. But we went to Riga, which is the capital. And from there, the conference was actually held in a small town called Riga on the water. Now, I'm going to say that my um, my way of recording these events occurred by sketches and drawings. As an artist, I carry a sketchbook. 
I want to show you, first of all, the cover of the book, which I ultimately published after we, re we uh, return. Uh, this is the cover. By the way, the book is available in the library. Um, I did the artwork. This is, um, I think you would call it a cityscape of Riga, Latvia. I painted this and it became the covered jacket. It's um, a watercolor and it shows the main steeple is the Dome Cathedral, which is where we went the very first night um, once we arrived finally in Riga. But first of all, the 150 or so delegates, Chautauquans, State Department people, um, musicians, all congregated in Washington, D.C., where we were giving briefings about the current affairs happening in the Soviet Union. This is George Shultz. He was the uh, Secretary of State at the time. He gave us a briefing about the situation that was very, very tenuous because Russia, Soviet Union, had um, imprisoned an American reporter based on the assumption that he was a spy. Now, this meant that we were not going to go to the conference set up in Riga because it was an international incident. But at a very important point in time, George Schultz stepped up to tell us that the situation had been resolved and the prisoner would be returned. There was a movie made many years later about this exchange and maybe it'll come to mind and you'll see it, but it is a true fact. So the delegates then were invited to the Soviet embassy and um, I stood in there and I was in awe of the grandeur of this place. In the left-hand side, you'll see these three gentlemen, our American delegate was John Wallach and the other two are the Soviet ambassadors. Uh, this was uh, truly an impressive building. But um, so from there, we were, it was it. Our trip was a go. We boarded our char charter flight and um, went on to Riga. So the very first night we were entertained in this dome cathedral that I uh, mentioned in my drawing, my painting, but was very disconcerting because the pews had been reversed. So our back was to the altar and we were facing the choir loft and way, way up in the tiny little area of the court choir loft, our singer, Ron Richardson, a tall, magnificent African-American singer brought in the Riga choir, the little boys, and taught them how to sing Jesus Loves Me and American hymns. So we witnessed that, and it was pretty moving and exciting, actually. This is just a kind of a close-up of what was in that little tower, probably the um, originally the baptismal font, possibly, or the um, preacher's station, not quite sure. Not quite sure, but I sketched it anyway. So the interesting part about our trip is that musicians joined us. American musicians um, performed with Soviet. Here we have Eugene Fodor, who had been our um, leading violin um, recipient, uh, I can't quite remember what star role he performed in the United States, but here he is now with the Riga Symphony Orchestra um, putting on this spectacular concert in the, um, this was in the city of Riga, of course, in their beautiful music hall. He was impressive, as you can imagine, and we were all 
super proud of him. Several days, we were taken to the conference site in Yermala by the water. And this was a wonderful little charming town that uh, kind of resembles Chautauqua from their point of view. But I often found myself wandering the streets and uh, making sketches. I'm particularly fond of architecture, as I would have loved to have been one. So a street scene like this was intriguing. Now, I knew I was always being followed. I had been warned that um, certain members of the Soviet uh, KGB, as it were, would be present at all times and that I would be, I would be watched because I was uh, sketching freely and openly and approaching the speakers and getting their signatures, um, I wasn't I wasn't concerned. I just felt I was a free spirited artist and I could do that. So this happens to be a street scene in Riga. Back once we went to our hotel and um, just a sketch that I actually enjoyed doing. The next slide is one of our performers, Grover Washington. Um, he was a sensation. He played jazz and uh, performed with various uh, large groups, but the young Soviet and Latvian musicians were so <clears throat> intrigued with him. They, um, they wanted so much to be near him and to listen to him. And of course, they were not allowed to go to his concerts that were organized by the government. But um, many evenings, he would wander into town and find a little pub or restaurant or whatever it was and start to play. And although the um, residents, young men and boys or whoever wanted to follow him were not allowed, but Grover said he wouldn't play unless they were allowed to join him. And, um, and together they did their jamming and Grover was a fair and generous and terrifically wonderful candidate representing our country and our, our beautiful music history of jazz. Other musicians that joined us, that's Karen Akers, a blues singer and um, Mark Hummel on the piano. Um, Mark is blind, um, but um, together and separately, they performed beautifully to represent us. And um, just, it, it warmed our hearts to see how free and spirited and sharing and caring they, they were in this um, tightly controlled Soviet society. We were just intrigued and moved by <clears throat> what they had to offer us. I did this painting of Riga. It's, um, it's a watercolor. It fairly represents uh, the main, um, first of all, that dome cathedral again, and um, other spirals um, buildings, but uh, pretty much uh, very European, very Eastern European looking, uh, sitting on the river during, before the occupation of the Baltic States by the Soviet Union, it was a, a great seaport, import and export, but all of that is now and was controlled, is at that time controlled by the Soviets. Another view of um, area in Riga. The architecture, as you can see, is very authentic to that period. Um, I, I am always intrigued by architecture of any kind and shadows and light upon the buildings, always something that inspire me, whether I'm painting in any city, be it 
Buffalo, my hometown, or as I travel anywhere through various cities and countries around the world, which I have been fortunate enough to do. So our conference took place over two or three days and I sketched every day. At the end of the conference in Yermola, which is the seaside town, um, so the Soviet uh, Friendship Society was um, to present a gift to Chautauqua in the form of a piece of art. And the night before the conference, I received a phone call from president of Chautauqua at that time was Dan Braddon. And Dan said to me, we have a problem. We do not have a gift. And we know you've been making a sketchbook and getting signatures of the speakers. And we very much want your sketchbook to be given as our gift. And I, I said that was really not possible because the sketchbook was my personal diary. Um, but if we could arrange in, you know, in the future to make copies, that would be fine. And it turned out that is actually what we did. But the reason he called, I thought, was because, <clears throat> excuse me, I was in deep trouble because I had taken with me paintings and drawings by my students where I was teaching in Clarence Central Schools. And my, my personal mission on this trip was to create a student exchange of art because I feel that art is a common language and that the differences in our governments would be resolved and disresolved through art. And sure enough, I found an art school. I gave them my students art. And in return, the next day, I was given a portfolio of young Latvian students artwork. Now I needed to get that back to my home town, you know, to, back to Clarence, back to the United States somehow. And uh, that was uh, another part of the journey that was quite intriguing. So we left Latvia and we went to Moscow. Uh, one of the first evenings was to go to the um, Moscow Ballet. And uh, we went to the Bolshoi Ballet where our ballet dancer interacted with the dancers at the Bolshoi Ballet. And um, this is a drawing that I did during the, the concert this magnificent hall, just absolutely beautifully embellished, wonderfully um, sculptured, just positively marvelous. It was just, just absolutely beautiful. Um, and then we went, of course, to Red Square, where I did a sketch of, this is the, um, um, this is St. Basil's, St. Basil's Cathedral. And on the other side of Red Square is the Kremlin, uh, my sketch of the Kremlin. So then I set up my easel right there on Red Square and painted this. It's a fairly large painting, um, but I sat right there and I did the best I could to depict this sense of grand architecture. And yes, policemen were there patrolling. I was being watched, I knew that, but didn't care. Um, I made the painting and um, I felt pretty good about it. I think I probably went back to my studio and did a little more work up on it. I did several renderings, illustrations of the St. Basil's. It's just such a spectacular building with the onion top domes, colorful, 
architecturally well balanced and designed and just probably a highlight and certainly a, a destination when it comes to going to visit Moscow. Here's another rendition of it, a little more abstract, um, a little more wet and wet. We did have rain, it just felt that way. This is still life of some of the memorabilia I brought back. That puffy looking uh, furry thing on, on the right is a fur hat, actually. Brought that back for my husband. And of course, the stack dolls, a little, um, lovely lacquer box and a plate and um, a counting device, as you can see. And also, you know, we weren't supposed to bring back money, but how could you not bring back some of the coins and, and bills from the Soviet Union as a memory? We had to hide those in our socks, I believe, in order to be sure that we would get them out of customs. I'll just show you this one classic one again. All of my paintings, my original sketchbook, and other photos or whatever else I did in that trip, I have now since in, entered into the archives, the Oliver Archives in Chautauqua Institution. So they're there and available. The original sketchbook, a copy of this sketchbook, and all of these paintings and drawings and um, the memorabilia you saw. I believe, I believe now I'll just uh, turn it back to Dennis or whoever would like to ask questions. It's such a long story here, but go ahead. Well, Rita, that was a, a wonderful journey. Uh, it's humbling to be around people with such talent uh, and uh, they can make the diary on, on the move capture the moments and the spirit. Uh, th this, as you said, almost didn't happen, but uh, fill in the one blank. Didn't they send a delegation uh, and was it hosted by Chautauqua? How did Chautauqua get the call to be the representative for this most important conference? Well, I was not personally an official, um, uh, one of the cultural, representatives, you know, was a cultural exchange in that we had the dancers and the musicians, but um, they didn't have a visual artist. I just took it upon myself because that's what I do. I mean, I had a somewhat difficult time being excused from teaching in Clarence, but once I was released to go and bring my student artwork, I just assumed whatever I assumed to do. You know, many of us had a had a quest and had a, a goal when we got there. My goal was to make the student exchange. Others, the physicians, uh, psychiatrists, the Jewish people were intent to visit Refuseniks. My mission was the artwork, and I was able to get artwork back also from the students. Nice. But did do you know did did they come to Chautauqua first, and this was somewhat of a reciprocal mm -hmm. arrangement of some sort? Do you know that background? Yes. Yeah, so the year previous, see, this was nineteen eighty six. In nineteen eighty five, a small delegate of um, Soviet entertainers came. I know there was a young woman who played the piano, a beautiful pianist, who was carefully guided. We were amazed at how she was not allowed to visit us in homes. But uh, at that point, there was some indication that there should be a return visit. And then it evolved through the State Department. They were very supportive. It shows you the role of Chautauqua in terms of national uh, awareness of uh, the importance of it as a, as a cultural center for America. Uh, Melissa, how are we doing or... And for questions. Hi, Dennis. We do have a couple of questions. Hold on just a second. Okay. Um, the first one is, what was the experience like to have a solo exhibition of your own work in Latvia? 
Um, well, how that resolves is um, because my sketches, uh, my uh, sketchbook, were, I was brought up on the stage in front of these 2,000 delegates at the end of the conference when the art was exchanged. And it, I was sort of introduced as the artist and, you know, and the whole rigmarole or whatever, the whole routine of not giving the sketchbook, but later going to Moscow and finishing it. And then we did make copies and it became the official gift from Chautauqua. But the very next year, Soviets, Latvians came to Chautauqua in another exchange. And there a woman who was head of the um, cultural exchanges, the Friendship Society, whatever, from Latvia, recognized me and invited me to go back to Riga to be the first American woman to have a one artist exhibition in the Art Academy in Riga, Latvia. And lo and behold, I accepted and uh, did in fact make and bring about um, 18 paintings, half were of Chautauqua subjects and the other half were Buffalo to show my home, my favorite place and the Chautauqua that they got to know as being important. And I had my one artist show then. Great. Another question, uh, actually a comment and a question. Your sketches and paintings are beautiful. Have you kept in contact with any Soviet citizens from your trip? If so, what are their thoughts on the current Russian-Ukrainian war? <laughs> That's loaded. Um, <laughs> <laughs> when I went back for my exhibition, I particularly wanted to be re-engaged with the students at the art school whose art I had brought back. And um, and my request to the high Soviet cultural exchange there was to invite their students and their teacher who had been my English interpreter to come to Clarence High School and bring their students. They did, they brought them. And then in return, I was invited to go back again my third time with students as an exchange. So we did this back and forth thing now, those young students, yes, and the English teacher, yes, I had stayed in touch with. Now, remember, it's getting to be 35 years ago and 34 years ago. This is all 1986, 87, 89. And then right after that, the wall came down. But I stayed in touch and several came back to America to visit. We, we, we heard of how Latvia had... Um, rebirthed in a way, um, built their culture back, had their independence. And recently I just get Facebook um, notes back and forth from some of those young artists who are accomplishing and doing their lives. As far as what I understand from Latvians that I know, today's situation with Ukraine has the Baltic states very nervous because if Russia can go in and recapture Ukraine, what could they do to dare to try to bring back the Baltic states? Yes, there's a major, major concern. I think that's all we've got in terms of questions. I think that's great. That, that is, Rita, sum it up. There were, first of all, uh, roughly two, three hundred people, weren't there, from Chautauqua? You were part of, of a much, a fairly large delegation of sorts. It was about 200, all total. And that included all the Washington delegates and the musicians. Yes, it was a large one. There are so few left around. I'm one of very few who are still around. And remembering and being there. And I will say it was life-changing. It was absolutely so profound to be and live in existence in that place in the Soviet Union. I will say in 1986, returning from that trip, I really never, never wanted to return to the Soviet Union. 
living in that suppressed kind of culture was so alien to uh, Americans, as, as you can imagine. But to be invited back to have my one artist show, how could I refuse? And um, I had several provisos. I wanted to live in the apartment of an artist and have the English teacher as my interpreter and guide through the whole time. And there we went and I got to, to um, visit artist studios. I particularly wanted to visit female, you know, women artists who were suppressed. I was able to do that and go to theaters and um, rallies and places that were really um, off limits for, for most American visitors. But as a guest, these are the provisions I set up that I wanted to be free to do that. So it happened. Well, uh, I, and, I, and I, can you speculate based on your own feelings that the, 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 whole, the whole journey was part of a process that eventually would lead to walls tumbling down. Uh, did, did you feel that as it was happening or only looking back, can you piece it together? Um, yes, there was a strong sense of perestroika at the time. Um, Gorbachev was beginning to indicate there would be more freedoms. And we Americans brought lapel pins. I see you have a lapel pin on. The pins we got in Washington had cross flags, the American flag and the independent Latvian flag. And we had handfuls of those and I passed those out freely. And that was the message that we gave that America did not accept the unlawful occupation by the Russians of the uh, Baltic states. And yes, I think that our delegation, the Chautauquans, helped to free Latvia. I think we, uh, we were a milestone, a stepping stone toward that sense of freedom. I, I certainly, uh, it seems that way from a distance for me. Uh, uh, you know, hearing your story and being aware of it, my lapel pin is our Pan-American exposition flag, which was loaded with symbolism for us here uh, in 1901 uh, of our hopes and aspirations for peace and, uh, and unity in the world. Uh, and, and you certainly lived it out. Shows you how an imaginative art teacher in a, uh, uh, a school setting here in Western New York can imagine herself uh, with her talents, Rita, yours, uh, to go out into the world and do incredible things. Uh, you're, you're a joy to listen to and, uh, and my thanks on behalf of a grateful community for all the work you've done, both here and at Chautauqua. So thank you very much. Uh, you, folks, Dennis. You're, you're most welcome. I will uh, uh, sign off here. Uh, this has been a delight to do. Uh, next week, we hope you'll return and join us on Tuesday at 1230 to hear Margaret Wooster of the Western New York Environmental Alliance. She'll be talking about our Great Lakes and, uh, and our water, a most important treasure and resource here as we imagine ourselves as a significant and important cultural and nature center for North America. So I'm Dennis Galecki, be well and good day. <laughs>